All right, hello, welcome to the Freedom Unchained channel. Uh, my name is Garrett, and this is part three, oh, three of my synth interview. So I hope you guys go back, and if you haven't already, go watch the first two parts. Um, to get an idea of what we're talking about in this third part. Uh, the mood starts to change in the third hour, I think, since blood sugar, as he says in the video. He needs to replenish, but he goes on um, for a, a little longer. Um, and Sense's mood seems to drop after he goes on and on about the government and how horrible they are and the government system, the control controller system, the deep state or whatever you want to call it, the order, as I just started hearing it's called. Um, but I'm not going to hold you guys long. Like always, please like, subscribe, comment, um, hit the bell notification, so on and so forth. If you guys want to donate to the channel, help support what I'm doing, um, there's uh, crypto links in the description. If you want to give me some Skycoin, that would be great. Um, or some PayPal, you guys can use that as well, but that's about all I really have right now at this point. Um, but I did want to talk about one thing real quick. In the comments, somebody said something about, uh, it wasn't nice that I said something about uh, Synth being autistic. He is autistic. I was pointing it out as a good thing, not a bad thing. I don't put people in boxes to, uh, or put boxes around people or make titles on things to uh, hurt them or destroy them like most people do. I do it to uh, encourage people and bring them up. So anyways, let's get to it. They have to give the public their leaders mm -hmm. so that they follow them and you can't have, and if they don't give the public their leaders, they'll find them on their own. So the social media is really about promoting synthetic whores and promoting um, these people. Like before they had Alex Jones and, and then they ban him and then they'll promote like Scene Hannity or something. And he'll have his like little CIA badge when he's on TV and he'll you know, promote this fake pseudo Alex Jones on Fox News that, that we control and we'll create like this pseudo celebrity. And, um, and so people really don't have authentic leadership they their narratives are completely controlled like it's impossible today to get even find media even alternative media where the narratives are not completely controlled by like this group or that group and um people are just um i i don't see if this if this goes on in our two generations there's no future for humanity mm -hmm. it's, these people they're all going to be dead like um yeah I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about it. Like the healthiest people don't have social media. They don't read the news. They read books. They talk to people and the problems that they, they have in their life are like, they have their student loans. They have to buy a house. It costs $2 million. How am I going to buy a house? How do I run my business? How do I blah, blah, blah. It's not like, Oh, there's these people over there and they're not wearing four masks. <laughs> so I need to go attack, you know, you can get people to spend their whole life running in circles focused on bullshit that doesn't matter. And it's just, it's just like they're in this bread and circus mode right now. Keep the people entertained, keep them distracted, keep them focused mm -hmm. in every direction on, on UFO, Pentagon UFOs, Pentagon UFOs. Like, yeah, you're $2 million in debt. You have half a million in student loans. You're never going to be able to pay your you uh, you know, you're ha you buy a house. You, you, you can't have children because it's too expensive. Um, the, the economy just went off a, f a flicking cliff. You're not, you know, you're not getting your social security check when you retire. You know, you're going to get cancer and die. You live in a country with 80% diabetes rate. Uh, you're being poisoned in a thousand different ways. And uh, life expectancy just dropped two years for people in your demographic. Um, you know, you're up to your eyeballs in debt and you're, and you're, what do you call oh, UFOs? Yeah. UFOs. And those guys over there aren't wearing two masks. So they're Nazis. Like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it, it, it's, I don't know how long this, how do you, how long do you think this bread and circus, it's like a clown world. Like yeah. I, 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 and it, this is very recent too, isn't it? Just the last couple of years it turned into this. Uh, I think it's been building up. I think it's just I think we see it more now, but um, I don't know. I just want to let's go back to blockchain because I, I just think oh, that yeah, yeah. man, that's like like blockchain is just gonna make corporations disappear, like the stock market, 
like it's all going to go over there and um, they're either going to have to you know modify their technique and how they can control us with using blockchain or you know it's just going to be like i believe Companies i believe eventually be eventually we're not going to we're not going to need money because it's all going to be like okay you you can trade the value of this company or you know this organization or this community or you know instead of saying okay we need the us dollar to trade no you can just I, i'll give you this little piece of my company or my, my my blockchain for you know so it's i think eventually when all the corporations or whatever I, I i believe eventually the corporations will just disappear and it'll just be like 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 a the a dash like a dash community how they have the treasury and the you know and that you vote on uh, what kind of uh uh projects you want to support and um uh the how with your advertisement that you want to go out and you know and if you don't like that you don't like that plan or that that style then you move on to the other one and then you, you know that's all and then you can have like you can be you can be part of multiple the of these communities and i just mm -hmm. that's kind of how i see it. you blockchain i yes. i think it's a positive thing i think it's you know um like so any uh, company should be able to be publicly listed from day one just by issuing the shares on blockchain and yeah. they should have liquidity and companies mm -hmm. should be able to issue their own money or even like but gift like cards or every every company anything. isn't going to be like a cent it's not gonna be centralized control like you know what i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be it's going to be decentralized so like as soon as you launch a, a company or on blockchain you have shares it's like it completely takes the power away from that corporation to be able to you know control the power of that corporation kind of thing so i just see everything as, as that being positive if we can you know focus on decentralizing and putting everything on blockchain so that's why i love love the uh, skycoin you know the way you're doing it and the way, what you're setting up and i think the the infrastructure of the internet is very important like um um, you know, do you think local communities like what? What do you have? You have like a sheriff. You have like a mayor, like a town council. Like, what is like, I don't that thing know. you I, can do I, for I, de democracy? Like, for to, like do local elections and stuff on blockchain? How would they? I, I would. Give a no, I would say. I would say get my idea of it. I would say just do away with all that, and then like um, the small communities, if they want to do something, they'll contract with each other. Like the blockchain is going to make the con doing contracts easier you know what i mean not not the smart tr contracts of ethereum but a smart contract of you know, when you do a contract then it'll execute and uh, you don't have to have you don't have to go fight arbitration or something if you if the arbitration would be within the communities like then instead of mm -hmm. doing a court system it'd be an arbitration of like okay what do you what does this community think of you know so let's build a road then like instead of like voting on something you take your asset and you say okay i want this project built so i'm going to put my money toward or whatever eventually i believe it's not going to be money but you, you put our money toward a community garden or a park or a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. a road or you know um to you know in uh, the great depression there were towns and they started printing up their own money called script mm -hmm. and these towns had booms like they would just print up for the unemployed and build a football stadium or build a new school or build this or build roads and they had massive economic booms and then the federal government came in and made it illegal and stopped them yeah. because basically if you control credit if you control the money you can control the economy you can slow it down and you can centralize it but if local communities start producing their own cryptocurrency they can build schools they can build infrastructure yeah. they can build their own wells their own water purification exactly. plant their own power plants the checkpoints they can fund their own police but the reality is you get money and 40 or 30 to 30 to 40 percent of everything you make goes to the federal government. So if mm -hmm. you're a community, a business, you make money and then 40 percent of the income just gets siphoned out right away to Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. So if you had one hundred thousand dollars in the community circulating the next year, you have 60 and the next year, you have 45 mm -hmm. and whatever. And the only way that the money reenters the system is through welfare. So you need to have this massive. Well, mass that's why that's why I'm people. focusing on uh, common law and like getting the government, the corporation government, like be able to um, fight them off and not allow them to tax us and shit like that. I, we have the power if we understand the, the court system, the law. Like they've they've indoctrinated us to think they control the courts, but where they don't. Like so, if we understand that they they don't have the power to tax us anymore and take our money and steal it. So like if we just start launching 
these micro communities and start just doing what we do and then there's people that actually know what the fucking law is then we'll be we'll be uh you know and then people are always like okay so what if someone's gonna pollute water or something like that it's like well that's why i want to do like the uh the you know star rating you know if everybody had can mm -hmm. when you do a contract with somebody and they fail to do a contract or you see them doing harm then you, if it's open in public and you can start reporting these things you can start putting claims out there and you start putting you know accountability to these things then eventually those people are not going to use that stuff and it, you know like you know the council it's a kind of like the cancel culture but like instead of it being like on uh social media cancel culture you just stop giving them your money you stop funding them as soon as they they can't do business with anybody then that evilness of what they're doing is going to disappear i don't know so the, the local elections like Comcast, Time Warner companies, they started to put in like even actors and they started to control the media. And not only like what's happened with Zuckerberg is they went after the state, they went after local county by county, which counties they have to control the election officials. And they put people in years in advance to basically be able to pull this off. And they have computer programs to predict what people are going to do like is this person corrupt are they morally flexible can we control them are they going to revolt against this are they going to go to the public and also control the prosecutor because if you control the prosecutor in that district even if what you do is illegal you won't none of the people will go to jail for it so it's very if you had a public prosecutor like you vote for a senator if you voted for a prosecutor and they they campaign on we're going to arrest hillary clinton or we're going to prosecute Hillary Clinton or Biden or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, in some countries, they have public prosecutors where you elect the prosecutor and they, and they have to campaign and they get elected. And that's very important. And they don't have that in the U.S. And they don't have that in the local community and they need that. And the other thing is uh, the community participating in budgeting. Like in Brazil, the local community participates in where the money is getting spent by the government. Right now, the federal government, they don't ask the public where they spend the money mm -hmm. and the state government or even the local government. And when you actually just open up their accounting sheet and you see where the money is going, it's just so much fraud. And it's at least 80% of the money is being stolen. It's just, mm -hmm. they don't even... It's just really inc incredible, mm -hmm. insane. Uh, her, it, it, it's yeah. just, I really don't know what's going to happen. Well, I, I, think I don't know if the blockchain is going to do away with politicians. So that's my goal, at least. You know, there's no mm -hmm. need, there's no need to vote no more. You vote with your money. We don't need to vote. We don't need to give our money to somebody else and then go vote on on a politician for them to not even listen to us. It's like it's oh that shit's over, man. Like that's why. Why as soon as I learned about Bitcoin. And decentralized, I was like, man, this is the power. I'm going to focus on it. Fuck the bank system. I'm done. I can't get it. I don't have a bank account no more. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there's no need for it no more. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to educate people on that. Like, I want to get them to realize this and start thinking about, like, if we just ignore them and get, you know, stop, stop voting for them and stop acting, you know, get out of their system. And the, mm -hmm. I, and the common law is just like, I don't know. I go. I always go back to it. It always goes back to common law for me. <laughs> if we understand so how the court the, system works, then we, you know we understand we the, the government has no power. So you think like local media, lo, like local mesh nets, local media for towns, and just start gra You know, you you want to start grassroots, and you just want to build up. Like start with the internet, then start with social media and communication, and yeah. then go to governance. Yeah. So it government. goes back to like, why do we need? Um, local media groups it, it should be local mm. reporters like we don't need police investigators no more we need local in like individual investigators like they everybody should have mm -hmm. ha, be um accountable for their own actions like we shouldn't have police mm. that are in a this gang and then um they're not when the police goes out they're not accountable for their own actions because now they go because yeah. when you go complain to the police the gang members they're like oh yeah we'll investigate our gang member don't worry about that it's just so absurd i china is so I, i'm in china and i'm i'm in shanghai and, and uh there's no lockdowns there's no covid since april there's nothing there's no forced vaccinations there's no covid test for travel 
uh, there's nothing. It's been gone since April, you know, and it's it's very it's very weird over here. Like they, you know, they don't have a democracy or local government, but they people they riot. So the government doesn't. They mostly like leave people alone. Like if, if you're like they they're not going to go in and stop people from making money or putting bread on the table or feeding their family or anything. Like they mostly. You know, they mostly stay out of the background, you know, in the background and then they like, you know, they do like a water tax or, you know, utility tax, electrical tax, but they're not telling people um, how they should live their life or what they, you know, what they should do or, sh or shouldn't do. Um, and it, it's just, they mostly let's leave you alone. And then each group is responsible for their family, their children, their wife, you know, their deal with their business. And, um, and then they leave you alone. Yeah. It's it's like uh, but in the in the U.S., I feel like in Europe, it's it's mostly like you're gonna eat insects and you're gonna <laughs> do this and you you can't have a vehicle and you can't do that and you can't blah 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 and and it, it it's just like uh, it's like some weird like 16th century religion where the Catholic Church is telling you like you gotta do this, you gotta do that, mm -hmm. you gotta do that, and it's just like some uh, mm -hmm. it's just like this cult. Yeah, that's like I see these people with like a North Korean like cult mentality. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know what the percentage of the population is. If it might only be eight percent of the population, and it's just promoted through social media. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for social media, these people might not even be seen or might not be existing. Yeah. Might even even be two percent of the yeah. population. Yeah, the min it's minor so minority determine. is somehow louder than the majority. <laughs> but um. Very weird. I, like another reason I, I like what you're doing is because I believe we can give the individual like re reporters the power so the reporter can publish their articles to um, their own blockchain. And then if you want to make a media company, you're not making mm -hmm. a media company by hiring these reporters and then controlling them. But you go, you mm -hmm. make, you launch a website and you start pulling mm -hmm. the what you the, from the reporters that publish on their own blockchain, and th you, then you pull, and then you oh, can you aggregate like you judge. Ag yeah, you aggregate it, yeah, into a instead of you know, you, then they're not controlling. Drudge was bigger than CNN. You know, Drudge was bigger than CNN, and he he was bought out basically. Yeah, they bought and him they, out. They had to control him. They had to you like know, killed him, and then they bought him out, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> killed him. <laughs> it's just it, oh, I don't know. I'm, I need. To, I should go back and get the software working, and then just watch. Oh, man, yeah, I get to, so depressed, like just watching this stuff and, and thinking. No, about man, it. you just, just keep like, you keep working. I'll I'll be the visionary. You just keep working on your dang thing, so you, I can implement the shit that I need to implement. Because without you, mm -hmm. I can't do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you, man. I'm relying on you. I'm being positive here. I need you to be positive. <laughs> Oh, the one good news about crypto, I should say more about crypto. There's a huge financial crisis coming this year towards the end of the year. A lot of bullshit's going on, a huge amount of crap. Um, I think that it looks like to me, um, there's, for, so first of all, they're putting in positive interest rates. So if you get a mortgage in Canada, they'll put in a minimal of 6 or 8% interest rate on the mortgage and they'll require 30 percent down so they're cutting off all bank lending except at very high interest rates then they're putting interest rates negative so they're saying we're going to give you the banks negative interest rates and we're going to charge you massive interest rates so they're going to have um what is negative interest it means if you have money in your bank account they're, they're going to take one to two percent of that money per um per year as a fee Oh, okay. So they're just going to reach in your bank account and start grabbing your money. Yeah. And there's going to be a huge rush into blockchain, not just because of that. And there's financial instability and there's things that Putin's doing and like the, you know, this Nord pipeline and like Germany is going to be buying oil from Russia this, and there, and Europe's going to be throwing the U S sanctions under the water. And these co countries are going to stop taking U S dollars for this. There's a, there's a lot of, I, I can't even say a lot of the stuff I've been told. Um, and there's going to be more lockdowns, economic devastation. There might be bail-ins. So people might wake up and their bank accounts are frozen or there's limit. So pretend you have all this money in Canada. 
and these Chinese people have hundreds of billions of dollars in Canada and the Canadian government says, we're going to start taking one or 2% of the money in your bank account every year. Those Chinese are going to move all their money out of Canada. They're going to mm-hmm. flee the country uh, flee into Bitcoin and blockchain and to where, you know, and the Swiss government just out um, they're canceling currency. So you have like a $400 Swiss bill from this series. They're canceling that currency and that money is stuck in Europe. It was hoarded as cash and people are trying to liquidate that money and the government wants them to take the bills and put it in their bank account and declare it and pay 40% tax on it. So there's people that, that were hoarding cash before and now they're hoarding gold, palladium, artwork, they're buying farms for palm oil plantations and so on. So you have a lot of, a lot of um, money from these going around and around and they're making it really hard to buy gold, to own gold, to move. Like you could just get on a plane with gold and no one bothered you. If you go into Europe now, they take off your necklaces and they weigh them. If you go into Japan and you have a gold ring, they make you take off the ring at the airport and weigh it. Jeez. And if you don't have like some paper slip, when you leave, they'll tax you on it or confiscate it. So they're taking like people's jewelry off in the EU and weighing it so they can confiscate it because they have gold. It's like, it's, it's, they're, they're trying to stop the public from having any type of asset mm-hmm. or money. And the governments are just going into this kleptomania phase. Like even in California, like break for years now, they declare your safe deposit box abandoned property, even if mm. you go to the bank every week and live one block away. Yeah. And they seize whatever's in your safe deposit box and they auction it. And you find out 10 years later. So, um, oh, it's abandoned property. Huh? Mm-hmm. They're, um, well, I think they wrote you know, that into law, like not law, but legislation. The last time the market crashed is like they're allowed to go in America, go in your bank. If the bank- banking system collapsed, they're allowed to go in and, and clean you out, man. <laughs> yeah, you have no no rights no more. MF Global, they leave, they said if you had shares in a broker, those shares used to belong to you. Now they say that the shares belong to the broker and that you're just a creditor yeah. to the bank and that there's senior creditors who get their money first and the customers get their money last because they're not senior creditors. The people with the, you know, so they've actually rewrote the law so the bank now owns the money and you're just a creditor to the bank. It's not your money anymore. So they have all these rules to fuck, screw you, to just screw the people. So the people who don't have assets in crypto, they're going to get wiped out. They're, they're not going to have anything. And the, even the people who have crypto assets, they're getting hacked left and right. And there's government programs to like track the hashes of all installed applications on iOS and Windows and track what application you have. And on iOS, when you open up like an application, it sends some thing back to apple that they the government and isp can intercept to say what application you're running on your computer who's running this app what's the list of people running this app when do they open the app how often do they use the app what version of the app are they using and they're they're doing like you know privatized cyber warfare basically going after crypto because it's so easy to steal so you know you have to use linux you have to use a hardware wallet yeah. And most people, even if they have Bitcoin, they're going to have just had a my Exo, Ex, Exodus it. wallet hacked. I lost. Oh, really? Two and a half thousand. I'm poor. <sighs> I'm a poor mofo. So that's a lot of money to me right now. <laughs> I know. I know people that two million. They made two million dollars on Ethereum, and then it just disappeared one day because they used my Ether wallet. Yeah. And they keep getting hacked, and they keep it keeps happening over and over and over and over again. They don't they don't learn. So mm-hmm. one of the things that we did we we're doing was we tried to build our own hardware or you know, our own operating system, our own hardware wallet, you know, like a crypto laptop, and try to um, do a hardware wallet for security. And we found it it's really hard. And even um, so, so I so I don't know. But anyway, all I can say is that people that have crypto by the end of the year, I think Bitcoin could even be over hundred thousand dollars. Some people mm-hmm. think two hundred thousand, but I don't. I think it might get to like eighty k. I think we're gonna have a series of financial crises, and and I personally know that a lot of people, like elite people, they're moving. They, their money can't go anywhere. It can't go into Switzerland. It can't go into cash. It can't go into gold. Yeah. They don't want to be in the stock market. They know the real estate market's crashing. They're dumping their houses in Canada, mm-hmm. and and the only place for that money to go right now is into crypto. 
So, and I don't think crypto is something, I think it's something the US government wants to control. I think it's something unrealistic yeah. for them to think that they're going to be able to control crypto. Well, so they, and, they, they control it through the exchanges. So that's kind of one reason I kind of want to see where you're at with the, the uh, decentralized exchange or your, your exchange. Are you, are you guys working on something or? Yeah. So on the back end, we, we have some types of um, software that we built a couple of years ago for being able to allow everyone to run their own order book and collateralize it and, you know, swaps. And we did protocols for that, but we're just so busy right now mm-hmm. with, there's just so much on, just on Skywire and CX mm-hmm. and the, it, it, I want to do all this stuff at once, but we, we just can't. It, it's have you, just, fig- have have you figured out how to clone yourself yet? Oh, I, 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 it's just oh man i i don't even i we did way too much and some of the stuff we want to do we have to do semiconductors and our own asics and so we have to build out like a whole team just to do like asic simulation and asic design and semiconductor production and we're really being hit by this chip shortage and then if we want to do FPGA encryption for like real encryption, not like this fake HTTPS prism yeah. encryption bullshit. Like we want to do real encryption uh, and we want to do it at line speed for a bit, you know, for business that is, you know, a gigabit, 10 gigabit mm-hmm. fiber lines for their servers. Um, you know, we're looking at, we're, we're producing hardware. We're, we're producing our own ships. We have to, um, you know, we have a lot of work, like, and then these antennas, these next generation antennas, like if we want to really do this the right way and we want like 10 gigabit, five gigabit, gigabit over, you know, we can even do it over 120 kilometers. I can go like, I can, I could connect to a satellite in orbit or to an aircraft. I can move the antenna. I can, every 10 milliseconds, I can change the target I'm transmitting to. I can transmit in both directions at the same time, full duplex. Uh, electronic steering you know there's there's some crazy stuff we could do with antennas but it's going to require manufacturing production it's not like a semiconductor wafer it's like a ceramic thing and it's like that big it's like they're huge so we have to do like lithography and we have to deposit like uh it's like it's like super glue basically and you use like a uv photoresist and you're you're dipping in these acids and you're adding metal layers and removing metal layers and, and, you know, we're built, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out how to produce these antenna panels for this like Skywire 3.0. And it's a lot of it is like, if I have a mining company and you're, you're, you're going to remotely control all this mining equipment for dirt moving and, and it's in the middle of freaking nowhere, we're, we're looking at, we could do it with parabolic dishes, but we want to be able to control the position of the antenna Hmm. and things like that. And, um, there's a lot of very advanced hardware that was, it was, this stuff is really old. It was prototyped in the eighties, but even like aircraft, government, military, there are like one or two companies that have this sort of stuff, but they only sell like five antennas a year. And it's for some really niche application. And, and it's going to, so we're, we're going right now into post 5g and to these app, these things being mainstreamed and to like next generation Wi-Fi, like 24 gigahertz Wi-Fi, five gigahertz Wi-Fi, directional 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And we're looking at miniaturizing these antennas uh, beyond the level that you would think is even possible. Like there's a magnetic loop antennas and they could be like a 10th of the wavelengths. And normally you have to have an antenna that's like two times the wavelength, four times the wavelength. So if you had to have an antenna, for like 10 centimeter, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, your antenna has to be 24, 30, 40 centimeters, right? And I can make it one fifth the wavelength, you know, using these like magnetic loops and and even having to write custom antenna simulation software to be able to even design these special types of antennas and then to be able to produce them. So there's just, I wanted to just spend a whole year or two years just doing this R and D and ceramics and playing around with this fabrication. But this year I just, and, and semiconductors and waveguides and antenna testing. And I was getting really excited about that, but then I got dragged back into, I have to get CX done. I have to get Skywire done. We have to get the social media done now. 
and and I think that's I don't know what people are going to do with it. I don't know if they're going to just like you got to get CX done because I need to use it. My 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 long term huge plan is like um, so like I've always liked the idea of multi level marketing, even though like they're all kind of shitty because you got to they make you singly like pick a product and like who it ever wants to do. But anyways, so like. Um, I was in California and I did this home home cleaning thing. It was like the Uberizing home. That's why I like want to Uberize everything. Mm-hmm. Uberizing home cleaning and um, they just hi- kept hiring people and they really sucked, you know. Yeah. So like my idea was like I'm, I was an awesome cleaner. So like what if I went and p- found somebody that I would train and they would work with me and I would train them. So this this is where I kind of get like a new new idea of schooling and educating people is through like mentoring mm-hmm. and uh, not through like put him on into a desk it's you know go out there and get your hands dirty and learn from that so like my idea is like if you get at this home home service thing where you find um mm-hmm. cleaners handyman anything in the house and then like the the people they can go out and get customers and, and like you just get a, a like with cryptocurrency and blockchain you can get a little bit you can build your income up by by training people and finding customers and then and then you can we can add in like um, home delivery, so I can bring toll paper and anything that people buy every week or something, or like we can do grocery shopping and like it can like you can take the people that are actually going in the house and doing the work instead of like you know this I think this would like destroy Amazon if mm. we we set it up yeah. properly and distribution, like distribution shipping yeah yeah and it would be all by, by yeah by individuals instead of like a mass corporation like. If you just have the network, being able to use blockchain and the technology and network each other together to be able to, you know, figure out how to get things more efficiently to the house. And, you know, and then because like when you're in the house and you start communi- or, you know, um, doing work for these people, they start to like fall in love with you and they, they want to like help you out and like, you know, keep mm-hmm. keep you coming in and they don't want, you know, so instead of. I don't know. It's it's a huge vision, but um, that's why I want. I just want to do it on a, on a blockchain and with CX. Mm-hmm. I think it would be an awesome, uh, you know, language to write it in and, and so forth and so forth. Mm-hmm. But but so man, finished it. <laughs> so, oh, I, yeah. so I can I'm take get back to work. So I can oh take my, my my little bit of crypto and start paying someone to program. <laughs> I got. I to, I'm just reminded how much stuff I have to do. I have to get back and just slog it out oh man it's this is like skycoin is not a small project this is like you know google or amazon Uh it's like let's rewrite twitter let's rewrite facebook let's rewrite Mm -hmm. the whole internet let's let's do you know it, it and there's only a couple parts but it's um i don't think we understood what we were doing how, how large this would be and then you know antenna hardware socs and all of all of the stuff that we had to do it, it just it's gets pretty crazy it's it's just um so i think this year yeah get cx done get skywire done and then i think that we want to get some social media apps going because mm-hmm. i really don't like what i'm seeing i see i think telegram's going to get shut down soon I think if you, um, if you focus on just to, you know, getting people to be able to post on their own blockchain, and then I think people are going to come in and use your CX to build a thing to, you know, um, out, what, uh, what were you just saying with the uh, the, what's that word with the the, the news instead of oh yeah, aggregation aggregation yeah you know yeah. people are going to start building aggregation machines to you know start finding information on those blockchains and aggregating what they want to, you know, promote and not promote. And if you focus, you know. Telegram is really weird because you have a channel of interest, but there's no feed. They don't have a central feed, right? It's just mm-hmm. whatever the channel person posts, but there's no filter. So the first generation was like we had Facebook and we had a feed. I think we had directories before that, like Yahoo or something. There were directories. And then we had feeds like Facebook and Google, Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then we're going back to no feed, no no ranking. It's just a topic. And then we go back to oh, oh give me, give me a second. Yeah. 
Okay, I I have to go because I have to eat because I haven't I woke up and I didn't get breakfast. So I'm gonna pass out. You see my glucose yeah. is dropping. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a good conversation. Enjoyed it. Um. Oh, um, one question, real quick. Um, mm-hmm. uh, obel- obelisk is uh, what are you launching soon or? Sky, oh yeah, yeah. So, moving over there. So Obelisk, um, we're gonna launch it first with CX chains. So it's um, and Obelisk is not just the consensus network for Skycoin. If we have five thousand, five hundred, five hundred thousand blockchains, we're going to uh, be using Obelisk for the consensus on those chains. So later. Um, so then, um, um, so Obelisk, um, we had to get these pub sub messages uh, replicated and there's some, we had a way of doing it before, but we've decided just to publish the message on blockchain directly. And we have a blockchain with a master node where some guy just keeps signing his messages and it gets published peer to peer. And, and we're going to just use CX infrastructure basically for the Obelisk consensus, which is going to be a lot easier than what we're doing now. And um, so Obelisk, when I have 100,000 blockchains, um, that this is going to be able to handle the consensus for those. And for most blockchains, actually, what's going to happen is you just have a bunch of nodes and it's going to do a leadership election and it's going to choose a leader node and that node's going to print all the blocks. And then the, the leader might change every four minutes or the leader might alternate between three nodes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know, depending on, so if one goes down, it's not going to cause a severe problem with the network. Or uh, we can have a, a committee where you like, if there's 10 nodes in the committee and they vote for the next block, or you can have open voting with 100,000 nodes participating, but that's going to have a lot more overhead and it's going to be slower. So Obelisk is not just a consensus algorithm. It's a, it's a whole consensus explorer uh, deployment, um, visualization of the consensus process. And it's a suit of six or eight separate consensus algorithms that can be used, even hybrid algorithms. Like we have con- uh, Obelisk for choosing the leadership, uh, the, the, the leader nodes or the master nodes and doing master node elections. And then a second le- level where those nodes are actually doing the consensus itself. So, so there's multi-level consensus uh, implementations and um, this is, a, and also hardware. So if you have a hardware wallet, uh, maybe you have a private key for your, for your obelisk node and we have a, a chip that you can put onto the SkyMiner and it, it's a heart, it stores the private key. So it can sign with the private key, but the computer itself cannot actually access the private key. So even if the node gets hacked, the, the digital identity, the, uh, the public key is hard coded in there and cannot actually be accessed. Or the public key can be accessed, but the private key can't be accessed or removed from the microchip. So this is, if I have a, if I have a like enterprise uh, company and I have 4,000 nodes in my network, each node has a unique ID and that ID might be something, we have like a unique ID we put in there that can't be changed and the, and we have it, which is a hardware identifier and then we have one that the user can create so, the, so they can generate a, uh, so they might have a hardware identifier and then this person can say, is this node part of my network and they can use the hardware ident- uh, public key, private key to authenticate the node and someone would have to physically steal the node, take apart the microchip, reverse engineer it, and th- then get the private key just to impersonate that node. So this is, a, this is a security infrastructure where we can ensure that only particular computers that have been approved can even connect to a certain network. So this is a really, um, so for cybersecurity, for like, I might have public servers and anyone connect to those servers, but inside my organization, only this set of computers can connect to each other. And within that group, I might have a subgroup and I say, only these are different. Uh, this computer should only be connected to this computer, but not that one. So this is actually also a cyber, sec- very hardened, um, like military level grade, like cybersecurity solution where we can, ha- we have like a virtual cloud and these, these computers can be all over the world on different networks. And yet they, are, are, you know, on a, they're on a software network 
and we're able to restrict what they're, what they're communicating to. So there's a lot of parts, a lot of parts to this. Uh, and a lot of aspects, and we're not going to be able to finish all of them or put them in the public deployment for years. But the, the basic obelisk, I want to, after I get CX done, I think that we're going to put together a team to get that done. I want to get that done pretty quickly because I think that it could be done you know, in, in a week or two. It's not that much work, actually. The, the core algorithm is really simple. and um, but I want to get that done soon, but it, it's just, I have so much work, so much work. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, you know, we're just building servers right now and, you know, installing network equipment and we're upgrading our um, deployment because of the user growth and our uptime tracker is completely offline. And we're deploying like new mining pools and we're trying, and we need the storage product to store all of these videos and, and media that we have. And this decentralized storage system is very interesting, but it's a, it's a lot of work. And I don't know. And also I start I, I did a video game 10 years ago and I started and I said, okay, it's about time I do a new video game. And I thought I'd have some free time because COVID and lockdowns. And so I, I started this game and and i'm using it for like to do nft and show off cx and use cx as a scripting language and then i started these other things and i realized like i don't have time to do all the things i you know i want to i want to do like i want to do this but do i do i think about this like do i really have time to do this you know yeah um so uh, you know i so um so what you just explained is, will that help um, keep people from getting their crypto hacked by having those uh, security on that chips and computers and stuff like that? We're going to have a custom chip, I think, within two to three years. And it's going to be, right now there's STM32, which is what the Trezor uses. And we actually fixed some security problems we found with the Trezor. And ours isn't even, you know, like, I, I want to do more security audits and, and add more, but it's, it's pretty much sufficient, I think, for what most people have. But we have to add multi-coin support. And we have another thing called signed code execution. And we're producing an, an RSI V5 chip based on an FPGA. And this is, a, it's going to be a completely custom, open, probably open source, I think, security chip. And it's going to uh, fix some problems that we found with the STM32. And it's also going to reduce our production cost. So I want to do that. And I want to, uh, I want to have like a crypto laptop, crypto cell phone. I want to integrate the security chip on all of the the, the official sky miners and all the sky miners that we're sending out to companies. Um, and um, yeah, and, and this is like, if if you have this system as a network, um, nothing can connect to your servers unless you explicitly approve it. So this is a full like cybersecurity, like isolation sandbox. Like there, there's certain nodes that will go between the public network, like the internet and, and people and your internal network, but nothing outside your, your internal network can connect to your internal network, but nothing else. So there's no way to hack it. There's no way to even send data to a, to, to a, uh, from a computer unless it's been sort of approved. So we're putting the identity, we're giving each computer an identifier and we're putting them on a blockchain for the network group. And each computer may belong to multiple network groups, but if, an, if a computer is not on that blockchain and they're not, you know, their public key isn't registered, they actually have no way of even contacting your computer. So if you're a company and you're putting a lot of stuff behind your firewall and you're deploying services, and so on. Um, this is like, you, you can't be attacked, you can't be hacked, they can't, even, you would read a packet and it would just do nothing because it, it would just decrypt gibberish. Nice. So, and this is gonna be at the heart, and eventually right now software level, but eventually it's gonna be at the hardware level. So, so uh, not a lot of people use this and this is pretty much like, um, I, I would say, um, I would say it's overkill for 99% <laughs> of people. Yeah. But if we really look at what's happening with China and Russia and the United States, they're starting to 
declare that like a blog is Russian propaganda because they disagree with us about vaccines. So it's, it's an enemy and we need to attack it. And, we're, and they're declaring cyber war against political dissidents. So you might post something on Facebook and you find that you're a citizen of France and your uh, GCHQ is injecting packets into your applications because of some Facebook post you made because you're considered to be a Russian bot, a domestic cyber threat. And, and that you have a government declaring cyber war and personally attacking you with like, a, they have what's called a Metasploit framework. So they use deep packet inspection to see all the apps coming out of your computer. They gather data about the application versions, what apps, then they have what's called Metasploit. And Metasploit automatically attacks your computer based on the apps and the versions of what you have installed. So they just put you on a target list and they load the Metasploit modules and then it automatically matches against the list and starts attacking you. And it starts injecting packets in to your like VPN connection to buffer overflow your VPN software and hijack it or inject it, you know, you're running Firefox 3.7.2.4 and there's a zero day and, and they run this exploit on it and then it runs the second exploit, then the third exploit and they're crashing your browser or inserting things. They could go to Apple and, and Microsoft, give them a court order so that they can sign update patches and then they can hijack the address to the Microsoft update server from your ISP and they can force an update to your computer that just hijacks your computer, installs a backdoor, root kits it. And Microsoft is not gonna, and Apple will not fight them in court. They're, they're taking over your computer, right? And they're monitoring you and they're spying on you. And they can even say like everyone who looked at this article, everyone who, who's subscribed to this blog, everyone who has this software installed is a domestic terrorist and needs to, and we need to monitor them, very, you know? Yeah. And they already have this at your cable modem, but that's not enough for these people. They need to have it at your computer, on your laptop. And, and you see the political situation of like, like, you know, in the US and Biden and the censorship and let's, the, the people protesting election fraud on the six they say they're domestic terrorists and you know they have a videos of them being waved in by the capitol police but we need to arrest the domestic terrorists and sending the fbi at them and you know and it could be like that we need they'll get a subpoena to hack every computer for uh, uh and insert root kits and key loggers and every computer of everyone who posted anything on parlor because they're all domestic terrorists right uh -huh. so if you tell me that this stuff isn't going to be abused for political ends by these people you're bullshit. You know, you're lying. They're going to abuse, they're going to abuse every single thing that they can in every single way that you can possibly imagine. They're going to do everything they can get away with. And then 20 times more, they're going to be absolutely shameless. If there is something that they're able to do, they're going to do it. Yep. That's, that's what's happening right now. And so, um, so that's why we need these systems. You can't like, if I, if I'm running, a system and they can't insert packet cannot insert packets into my traffic stream. That's a lot better for me than I'm running 40 apps and the government is fucking fucking with you and injecting shit in you know GHCQ cyber declared cyber war on you and they're using these tools they use to attack Russia and Iran, um, you know against some fucking like mommy bloggers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like mommy blogger versus GHCQ's 10,000 person, 200,000 year like hacker team in their Metasploits and 100,000 servers and fiber optics and, and satellites and FPGA packet injectors versus mommy versus word plus mommy blogger who can't figure mm -hmm. out why her computer keeps crashing, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so... I, yeah. th th this is just, it's just getting it retarded and, and embarrassing. And so I just want to have open source. I want it to be open, the data to be open and, you know, and let people do whatever they want. And it's not Russia. It's not China. It's not political. Um, just let people say whatever they want, curate what feeds they want to listen to. Yep. Everyone's responsible legally for hosting whatever they're hosting. Um, Cause it's on their hardware and, um, you know, and so there can't be really an acquisition of, of bias. And, and basically what they're going to do is they're going to lock down the internet and they're going to force you to do real IDs or, you know, you need a credit card to register for Facebook. And there's going to be a lot of political control over social media and, and, and uh, requirements. And they're, and they're trying to, 
you don't need an ID to vote, but you need an ID to access the internet. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Like you can't, and Facebook will lock your account if you say something. It'll say, send us your photo, send us your driver's license because you said this or that. And they're yeah. using it to build government databases, the databases of people that they want to get rid of and shut up. And, and it's not only, you have to understand, it's not only about censoring these people and shutting them up because they have to eventually eliminate them. They have to put them in jail. They have to torture them. They have to disappear them. They have, if they want to maintain political power, they have to kill these people. They, they never just, you know, they don't just stop at let's censor them from Twitter. That's just the first stage. The next stage is torturing them, disappearing them, Operation Phoenix program, black sites. You know, they did this, this happened before in, you know, like in El Salvador and in South America. And there's a huge history of this. Once the governments, the power elite, once they go down this route, there's no stopping. They're, you know, it, it's going to end at, um, you know, they're not just going to stop one day and say, okay, that's, we're just banning from Twitter's enough. They said they're domestic terrorists. They said that they need to be annihilated. They said they're a threat to our democracy. We need to destroy these people. Um, you know that they need, they need they need their enemy that needs to be eliminated. That you know they're, they're ready to genocide them. They see that it's that their political power, their vision of of what the nation should be requires that the nation be cleansed of these dissenters. That they're talking about physical elimination and genocide. Of their political opponents and historically uh, this is really common it's really hard you know you go to china you go to el salvador you go to ecuador you go to any brazil you go to you know vietnam you know and this is typically once it goes once you have all these people fighting for power and you have civil you know unrest and instability um you know people really shouldn't be surprised if they see what their government, you know, their government's been doing this overseas for 60 years now in, in hundreds of countries. And I don't think it really should be a surprise if they would adopt those same methods domestically. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be shocked yeah. or are shocked. Like, oh, they can just send, you know, what happens and what they, but the fighting really hasn't started. But once it gets really bad, um, you know, so we're basically talking about genocide. It's yep. not even just about censorship or it's, it's just like, you know, there's these people and to build our utopia, we need to cleanse the earth of these people. And that, and you know, that's sort of the rhetoric is that we're good. They're bad. We need to destroy them um, for opposing us. And um, I don't know what, you know, what, what I'm, what, what else I can say about that. Um, <laughs> you said a lot. All right. Uh, I'll let you go. I don't want you to. All right, I would pass out we yeah need, i need to get we, lunch oh need, my god we need your working man um oh. all right i hope you guys enjoyed the last part of the interview um that kind of got a little intense in some points in the interview which was good because uh, this is what we need to be talking about this is how we can replace the government system and move outside of it without having to fight it or uh restore it or any of that kind of stuff we just need to uh, build a blockchain that we can replace it with um, everybody, if anybody wants to build a town with me, contact me. We can start building a town, blockchain town, with our rules. We can fight them off with the uh, knowledge of the actual law and our our secured freedoms that we actually have given by God. But most people don't like that. But anyways, um, I, people were talking about um, my stickers. If you guys, some want, some somebody wanted a cup, somebody wanted just the cloud. I can do that. Um, so just message me, you guys, in, uh, Proton Mail, the, uh, Freedom, or, uh, sorry, correction, fr Foundation Freedom at ProtonMail.com. That is the normally the easiest way to not get your message lost. I check those every once in a while, or Twitter, Facebook, so on and so forth. In many ways, contact me. I'm not hard to get a hold of. Hold of. And uh, we're, we will work something out that I'll send you the stickers out and you can send me some Skycoin or something like that. So um, that is all I wanted to talk about. So until next time, I'm going to leave you guys in love and light. One infinite creator. Peace.